I think what's really we're seeing here in the breath work is something else that's really special and powerful, and that's the release of emotions that have been stored. The second round here today, I was so happy that I started crying because I recognized how often in my life I'm not that happy. We're in a room in Poland. We're sitting with Wim Hof who just led us through a breathing exercise, if that's what you want to call it, um, more of a spiritual experience. And we just finished, and we wanted to share our experience, what opened up for us. And before we do, can you share in a couple of minutes uh, context of what we actually did, what it's the purpose of it, why you do it, and how it helps people yeah. heal um, themselves? Mm. The breath. Um, we have shown uh, in science as the first ones to reach into the autonomic nervous system, thought of inaccessible uh, by humans. And now we are. So we are using the breath not only to go into these deeper systems of ours to bring it within our willful control. We are here to show that the breath actually is the carrier of consciousness. And with that consciousness, we are able to go any place in our bodies, in our brain, the, the seat of the mind. And with that, you get a comprehension of what is the soul in the moment, right here, right now. Nothing abstract, a feeling. Feeling is understanding. So I see you guys here co coming, all big guys and uh, influencers and all. Uh, so um, great. Uh, it is great. I got a new, uh, some uh, new insights. I always keep on learning. Um, I'm very thankful that we have come together and to show that we as big men are able to become very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. There is the strength to uh, not be in need to stay in control, to go past the control into vulnerability because you want to venture into something else than is given us by our schools, our teachers, our doctors, and so forth. That's why we have come together, and I, uh, I would love to hear uh, what is your experience. And the biggest thing that opened up for you during either this session or the first two and a half days. So gratitude, why you decided to come experience this with Wim, and what opened up for you so far in this breathing or this time? Well, I mean, one of those questions is really easy because this was an easy yes. I mean, this is uh, not only did I know a couple people here already that I consider friends and brothers, but I've got to spend time mm. with Wim Hof himself and Anum as well and got to meet his family and have been practicing the method it's, it's not as much as I will after being here because I think this is one of the big lessons that I've learned is, you know, I have a lot of the tools and I've been on the path of learning, discovering my soul, my spirit, like what that essence is, consciousness, your higher self, whatever you want to call it, there's a million words that inadequately <clears throat> describe the ineffable essence of who we really are. And I've been on the path of seeking that. Um, but I don't always remember that. I forget it mm -hmm. often and I forget it easily. And to be reminded that it's just a sequence of breaths away. Mm. And, uh, and to be able to do that in an environment with people that are becoming brothers, some came in as brothers, like yourself, mm -hmm. Lewis, and now everybody becoming brothers, it's, I'm happy. I'm happy. And I don't know if I'm always happy, to be honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? And like this now is showing me that happiness is not something that's ephemeral. It's not something that it just, you know, comes to you or it doesn't come to you based on some external thing like you can create it and you created the container by bringing all these people together and then we're creating the internal state with our own breath and it just gives control back to something that i think society in the world has, has told us is out of our control mm -hmm. and so we get our control back yeah. by using the method and um 
and it's just the best, you know, and then you look at the priorities of your life, and you're like, huh, like, what am I doing everything I'm doing for, when everything I'm doing is not yielding this kind of happiness that I've had here, you mm. know, with this group of in men, a couple of days. this method, yeah. in a couple of days, and uh, it's just a great reminder about, like, what's really important, and in which way to steer life from here forward, so... I'm just incredibly grateful, grateful for life and grateful mm -hmm. for our bodies and grateful for teachers like Wim that can help us get back and remind ourselves who we really are and mm -hmm. how to get back in touch with the animal and the spirit that's mm -hmm. inside all of us. Yeah. So, really nice. Cool. Cool. Nice. Steve. Uh, man, I'm, <clears throat> I'm super thankful for, for Tribe. You know, I mean, I grew up my entire life an athlete and then when you retire, it's not built in for you. So to just to become here and and to uh you know to tribe up with to tribe up with a lot of people uh that i haven't met before i really only needed to know like one guy was coming and right. that was you lewis but it's cool to see what you've created um in this tribe and we'll never have another experience like this so uh for me um the actionable steps i'll take you know with this experience um is is for me to to be better at keeping the main thing the main thing because I think a lot of us with the big dreams and the big desires of our heart we go so deep and obsessive towards that and as husbands and as fathers dude when I get home and I put my my truck and park I walk in the door I'm bringing that stuff with me yeah. you know I don't want to and I don't want to show up that way but that's the world we live in man we're trying to get things done we're trying to create legacy and that does create that does require obsession, but uh, just super thankful when that you've used your whole life to figure this thing out, and now, you know, it's like a popular cool thing to to do what you've essentially delayed your entire gratification of your life, and now people are finally starting to listen. So, um, just honored to be here and 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 to help spread the word over on the west side, man, because we need the help. So thanks for having us. <coughs> thanks, Bailey. Wow. Um, I'll go the other way around. I've, I, I came because I didn't want to come. When you sent that text message and you said, hey, getting a bunch of guys and going to see Wim Hof, and I Googled Wim Hof, and I was like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the back of my head, like, that, that's the hell yes. Your, your fears are a compass, right? It's got to, it's got to let you know where you got to go. So I said yes before I could change my mind. And, you know, bought the ticket before I could change my mind. And it's, it's, it's been... It's been such an amazing thing. I think the, the, the gratitude I have, and I've heard a lot of people express it, is brotherhood. This is a brotherhood that is being formed not simply because we're all in the same room together. It's because we're sharing unique experiences together. Yeah. We've had, you know, you never forget your first. That was the first time I jumped in water. Wow. Ever. Water, Ever. Cold water or water? Water. Water? I've never jumped in a pool. What? I have never jumped in wow. water. Wow. I can't swim. Wow. And I was telling some of the other guys. That's huge. And I've, and I've backed out of it. And I've not regretted backing out of it. And this time was the first time I was, in a, I was surrounded by people that were just completely encouraging. Wow. Walking up and, and Mike immediately being like, the secret is... Don't think about it. Just get to the edge and jump. And I didn't take his advice and I overthought it and I heard your voice like, all right, Humble, you can do it. Let's go. Three, two, one. And I didn't jump. Okay, Humble, you can do it. Three. And there wasn't any shaming. I didn't feel like I was surrounded by a bunch of alpha males who were trying to peer pressure me. And I think that brotherhood I see in my history, because I grew up with only sisters, how often I got myself in trouble chasing a brotherhood, looking for it in every, all the wrong directions. And to be in a, in a circle of self-aware, honest, super strong. And I think, as Wim said, true strength is vulnerability. And to be in this room and to see stu super strong people and have this, these conversations, the spectrum, is, is, it crosses everything. We're talking about the silly, fun stuff, and we're talking about the deep stuff, and we're shedding tears, and we're, we're getting technical and I think to have access to that is just, I'm forever grateful for it. And, you know, I've received so much that it is it is my privilege, but my responsibility to, I, I got to put it out there now. Yeah. You got to put it out there on a on a local level with my, my, my peoples, mm -hmm. but also with my community 
and, and, and the folks that, that look to me. And it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. And, and this experience of breathing, as Aubrey said, it's, 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 almost, it's almost unfair how lucky we are to have all these tools. Mm. Yeah. And they're there. And it's nothing mystical. I've, I've, I've been in some form of meditation since I was eight. And often it's sit quietly, close your eyes, because your mom will slap you because if you, if, you, if you move. And to see this is, you know, and to hear Wim just say, hey, let it, let it figure itself out. And the pressure, the shoulders relax and the pressure goes away and it, it makes room. And to say even simple things like we're going to build it up or tear it down, whatever needs to happen. I think so often we're told this is the way to do things. And we get in our own way. And I think just I'm so grateful for this opportunity to clear clear some of that. As I was saying yesterday, the ice melted our anxieties. Yeah. You know? Well, I don't want to speak for you, but I love how you said you've never had been around a group of guys who were supportive without pressuring you or, or saying like, come on, don't be a wussy or don't be a, a whatever, yeah. like jump in the water, don't be scared. And... and you said you've never experienced that, yeah. where it was just like supportive yeah. encouragement. Yeah, and a friend yesterday, he's like, oh, I see, I see on Instagram, you're, you're, you're with a bunch of interesting guys. Hopefully that makes you interesting. Mm. Or hopefully that turns you interesting. And I think, wow. every, you know, and again, it's just it's how they were raised as tools. And, and I got out of that and I'm grateful for it. But I noticed here too, a lot of people here may be family rich and resource rich and experience rich. But as a, <clears throat> another much more talented bearded poet said, people don't grow on trees. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that <laughs> all these people came across. You can't, you can't buy brotherhood. Right, it's true. You can't buy brotherhood and you can't, you can't form a brotherhood by force. Yeah. You got to sit in that ice together yeah. and, and let it develop right. one freezing second by one freezing second. So thank, again, Lewis, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Women, everybody, thank you for being here. Snake bite in the building. What's up, Michael Robert Henry on Posner, <laughs> Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> well, I'm saying, Grat what you're grateful for? What I'm grateful the, for. Um, why I came? Why you came? And the biggest lesson so far? I'll start why I came. Um, it's yeah, similar to Aubrey. It's an easy, easy yes. And Jesse texts me. He's like, man, it's a once in a lifetime. Bro. I was like, I know. <laughs> and uh, by the way. I was pressuring Jesse to come. I was like, dude, he's like, I got a speaking engagement. I got to move. I go, dude, you got to move it, dude. I'm in 100%. Come on, you in. And a few days passed, and he texts me back, double the insurance policy. I'm coming to Poland. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah, man, it was, a, it was a easy yes, man. Um, I heard about your work for years, Wim. And the opportunity to come learn from you firsthand in an environment like this, such a small group, um, it's just, you know, exactly what Jesse said, once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, and I knew that the the practices would help me, like some of the projects I'm working on in the short term, but also in the long term for my whole life. So um, I would say, Flipping into question two, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity, 100% grateful for you, Wim. I think Steve said it really well. I mean, you spent decades alone in that fucking ice. Nobody was with you, man. <laughs> yeah, and you just figured it out on your own. There was no book. So I think everybody that learns um, from you could be grateful that, that you had the courage to to spend that time alone and figure out Figure out your own shit. Figure tear tear yourself down. Build yourself up. Because um, without that, none of none of us would be here learning this amazing stuff. Mm. And biggest lesson for you. Biggest lesson. Um, man, yes, it it does feel like unfair, almost silly. How how powerful this stuff is that requires no anything. Everybody that's alive has their breath pretty much unless they're on like a um, life support. So, yeah, th the fact that we're able to go that deep as we just went um, without taking a drug, without fasting, without – it's like, like, like Aubrey said, like a few minutes away. It feels almost like cheating. Um, 
but hopefully that could be become a part of more people's daily lives and um myself today uh man yeah i just i feel like i went to a whole different state of consciousness this is a different place different mind state hard hard really to explain um when i finished doing the breathing exercise i start crying but i couldn't really tell if i was laughing or crying and it was really interesting because it was absolute jesse asked me what what were you thinking about when you're crying i was thinking about absolutely nothing it was absolutely no mental story or memory attached with my emotion just like i don't know if that's because it's just pent up in there or what maybe women can tell us but it just came out it was really um it was really powerful for me, and again, uh, like um, Humble said, man, the, this group, and Aubrey said, man, I feel happy too, bro, just being around you guys, it's, it's been amazing, amazing, so, um, yeah, thank you, Lewis, thank you, Wim, thank you, all you guys showed up, appreciate you. All right. Thank you, guys. I don't know, for me personally, I just, I don't want to be the 80% version of myself. When I look back when I'm 85 years old and when this thing is all over, I don't want to be like, yes, man, I was 80% of what I could have been. And when you have the opportunity to learn from the best in the world at what he does, there's 7 billion people on the planet and one guy stands out, you have to grab that opportunity. And for me, I was, I'm was i super aligned with the way Wim thinks as it relates to nature. Um, when I was a kid and I went outside, my mother was like, bundle up, put a scarf on, put a jacket on. My teacher's like, don't go in the water, it's too cold. Don't go outside, you're gonna get us sick. And here's a guy through science, innovation, mindset, has proven the opposite. And in a world where everyone's getting sick, following directions of the scientists and the leaders and the pharmaceutical people, whatever, out comes one man who says, there's a different way. And with one out of four American men getting cancer and all the illness, I'm drawn to that energy. I want to learn from that energy. So that's why I'm here. And I'm a big believer, you know, in in the more you experience, the more you have to offer. The more compassion you have, the more empathy you have, the more you can share. And um, I recently sat with a financial advisor and he asked me, if you could leave your kids a boatload of money or a boatload of experiences, what would you want to give them? Of course you want to give them experiences. Man, what in the world is a better experience than coming to Poland with 13 self-starters and 13 guys that are eager to learn? And as you get hard, older, I'm the oldest here uh, other than Wim, as you get older, it's hard to create newness in your life, man. Like, how do you get newness? You have to work towards newness. And this was something that was new, extraordinary, and to get an opportunity to to learn from a guy who's you know, on some ways a hero and, and, and someone that's, that's taking on the establishment, you know, and for me that translates beyond cold water. It translates to business, how I raise my kids, what kind of friend I am, what kind of husband I am, and what this man has really done, and I've learned in a short amount of time, it's not about cold water, man. It's about your mind and how can you take that out of the cold water and apply it to your daily life. So the lessons that I've learned are, and I'm on a quest for more, I'm an ultra runner, I'm a dad, you know, I want, I'm on a quest for more. My biggest fear is I don't live up to my potential. And what he has taught me is that the potential is bigger than we all thought if we tap into what we can control. And for that gift, I thank you, Wim and Lewis, you know, and everybody else. And the last thing I just want to say is, you know, um, this is five days in one. Every one day is like five days. If I stayed here for 40 years, I, I lived to be you know, 200 years old. So I might move to Poland and, uh, and, and be the oldest man in history to live. But yeah. thank you for hosting. How us. does this uh, compare to, you, for those who don't know, you've done tons of endurance races. You've got your own mountain uh, adventure race. You've done last man standing. You've done so many different challenges, extreme physical and mental challenges. How does these first couple of days compare to all the different challenges you've done? They're all unique in their own way. What's special about this is, is what Wim brings to it. And there's so much conviction. And um, conviction can take you a really long way. And I built my career on conviction. Um, and he just reemphasizes 
that. And what's but what's different about this is the thirteen guys in this room. Yeah, it wouldn't be a special and, if it was just one or two. No, and the, the the challenge with this for all of us is when we go home and you know Audrey's got a human, you know, guys got big followings in this room. Matt, you, Lewis, my everybody um, is trying to. How do you even convey the experience? And you you can't. But what's amazing about experiences is. 40 years from now, if I see Steve or I see Humble, Mike, whatever, I'm rooting for all you guys. I'm sure you guys are rooting for me, I hope. It's unbreakable, man. It's unbreakable. So I'm just excited to, to stay, Ansel, you too, and you, you know you came outside, you'll get your chance. I don't want to hug the mic here. Um, it's unbreakable, and you don't get that in a fucking textbook, man. You don't get that watching the Kardashians. You get that by going out in nature, suffering, experiencing, Etc. The last thing I'm going to say is the best part of this is the fear of go. Like we talked, you know, we talked about the cold water, and I was scared to, to all this stuff. It's the it's the build up and then getting over the hurdle, and it's no different than starting a business or or whatever. It's it's the fear getting over it, and and you know setting your standards really high. Wim has set his standards higher than high. He doesn't even, there is no, there is no standard. It's just, you know, like if this, if you told me Wim Hof landed on the moon with his own arms, cause he flapped his arms really fast. I'd be like, I believe that. And, and that's the standard we should, we should all strive for. It's like, you know, how, how far can we push the limits before we're in, you know, before it's over? Cause nobody here signed up for 80% of themselves. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity and the health to be able to come and be with you guys and uh, the experiences with you guys. And um, I'm also grateful for the fact that all you guys, as we are men in Alpha, we thought to be like tough, that you guys have been vulnerable enough to open yourself up to be, you know, not so Alpha and just let your, your emotions go. And why I came is several reasons. Um, but all play into one. Um, since I was a kid, I've always felt like, you know, I can't explain um, my journey. I just always feel like, you know, it's just guided by a higher being. Um, for example, when I was a kid, I told my mom I was going to play in the NFL at eight years old. And she said, you're going to, that only one in a million kids play in the NFL. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be that one wow. at seven years old. You know, it's, it's just, a, it's something that guides you. Um, and going into, like when I was younger in my teenage years, um, I always knew that I wanted to have twin boys. I didn't, I just like, I want to have twins. I want to have twins. And ironically enough, I have twin boys. And it's just crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's insane. Um, and, uh, and also, in the place, they, they play into the reason why I came here is because, you know, as a kid, um, I, I was teased and And bullied a lot, and as a dad and as a father, you wanna be able to shield your children away from that. So, and it scars you as a kid. You know, you take that with you as you get older. And I want to find out my faults so I can teach my kids not to take the same path that I took. You know, my wife called me yesterday, or she texted me yesterday, and she said one of my boys was at school, and a kid at school was teasing him, telling him he had uh, he had curly hair, and that it wasn't cool, and it's only cool to have straight hair, because my wife is white, and my kids are biracial. And, you know, when I heard that, it incensed me. It, like, it, it enraged me. And I wanted to let him know that, you know, and not to sound boastful, but my kids are very good looking kids and, you know, very good looking kids and let them know that, you know, it doesn't matter. As I've learned in life, what people think about you doesn't matter because you only got so many, so much, so much time on this earth that if you waste your time thinking about what everybody thinks about you, it's not, you're going to waste your time and your energy. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why I came was that um, I'm trying to find myself and my faults so I can you know, find, see the faults in my kids, because my kids, my twin boys, one is built like me physically, one is built like me mentally, you know, so I have to, I can see everything in them, and I want to be able to show them the right way, um, and the biggest lesson that I've learned is that you don't need all this crazy stuff, 
You don't need all this technical stuff to, to advance yourself and make yourself feel better and improve yourself. What you need is inside of you. Mm. Um, and it's very simple. You know, breathing, it's, it's, it's simple, you know. Um, so that's the biggest lesson I learned is that th- th- you already have the tools. God get, put you into this earth with the tools that you need to be successful. It's on you to find a way to access them and to put it out into the world. So I'm very thankful for that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, my name is Matt, um, a.k.a. Caesar, as Lewis calls me. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity, as simple as that, to be surrounded by a group of guys who are passionate, wise, loving, vulnerable. Um, I run Lewis's business, School of Greatness podcast, and um, I just uh, appreciate you know, every single one of you just uh, embracing me and uh, just allowing me to be me on this trip. And uh, it's been a powerful experience for me. Um, why I'm here, duty, requirement. I, I mean, at the end of it, Lewis said, you're going. So he's, he's like, there's no two ways about it. And my, my mom, my wife, they're all freaking out. You're jumping in these, these ice baths. You're going to be jumping into a freezing cold river. What are you doing? Do we have enough life insurance? <laughs> you know, you're going overseas, you have medical insurance, all this, you know, craziness. And and Lewis just said you're going. And uh, I, I acknowledge you and appreciate you for pushing me out on the skinny branches. You know, we need friends like that. Uh, we need to support each other and, and allow each other to, to see what's possible in our lives. So um, my biggest takeaway uh, is that this method, Wim Hof method, is... And, and I, I can attest to it, my short experience here is supportive both mentally for your mental health and also physically for your physical health. Uh, I, I had a feeling for mentally because I had done Wim Hof Method before in the States with Lewis. Um, but physically, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here with the dog and my, my dog allergy has gone. Really? Fuck you. Yeah. Wow. I'm oh, sorry. But you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's and never been able to touch dogs. And I love dogs. I absolutely adore dogs. Yeah, I loved them since I was a kid, but I, my parents couldn't get one because I was allergic. Wow. And I He's get all never top been of my around, chest around animals. Now I can be around dogs. I could take, I mean, after this exercise, I could take full breaths, whereas wow. I would have had to go outside, get away, take a shower. He couldn't um, touch a dog without like it swelling his face and sneezing and so yeah. it's the same thing with the fibromyalgia, mm-hmm. the histamine. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's out of control. Hey, you got to yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Right. So wow. they paid him five hundred dollars to say that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> no. Bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, great. Yeah. So I'm grateful to be here. Wow. And uh, I'm gonna pass it to Anam. My man. To me, I could bust through. No, what, what, you're you're here what are you what are you grateful for? Wow. Why are you here? And um, the biggest lesson so far from this group of this group of yes. guys being here. I'm here because I wanted to protect all of you guys from this man. No, no, it's so um with Lewis um uh, we have been a couple of times uh, yeah. on his podcast, and um, the last time we were there, there was like Lewis, the way he received us, the way he 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 let my dad uh, come forward, and 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 it's it's an art to to also to to have the best come out of someone, right? And and it, it's there. And I I my dad said, hey, let's do some event, and I was like totally open for it because normally I'm very close and behind the scenes i'm I, I built a big wall to towards these kind of of things um because yeah we're, we're I'm busy working with my dad for nine years and and you get to see a lot of bullshit out there yeah. and uh that being said here i normally never participate in anything i, I wear a scarf right now <laughs> because hey it's nice comfy you know and, and i don't care about what that says but yesterday going into the ice bath and i was like also i don't take ice baths <laughs> you know it's like a far uh, far off of my bed show uh, with my dad uh, yeah you know, is, is anyone doing here what their dad is doing i don't know uh, <laughs> but me not <laughs> and i was there with you guys in the ice bath and i was like insane when so uh, it, it, it was i don't know what what happened there but 
if I go in two minutes or three minutes, I am with my dad, you know, the biggest motivator and, and teacher with, with the eyes. I get like painful as, as F. But with you guys, it was like a piece of cake. Mm. And maybe not a piece of cake, but, but um, I felt confident. I was there, endured it. And it, and it was a great feeling. I saw a different Anam yesterday. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, amazing. I loved it. Yeah. So, and also with, with this group of, of guys, this uh, you know, I I've, I haven't looked into it too much, uh, but now I'm I'm adding all of you, and I'm seeing a certain thing coming forward on on the social media and on and on the anything and and what I see here is is. Man, you guys are great with your social media, but what I see here is even better, man. Mm -hmm. And you guys are the real deal. And that's, I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, yeah, it, it's just blown my mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys say it's a once a lifetime experience. Fuck that, man. Anytime you guys want to do something, <laughs> we're here. So thank you for being here and opening up. It's insane. said your son was different yesterday i'm very uh ah. very intrigued by that because i have a similar relationship with my son and i try to motivate him and he's mm -hmm. he doesn't take it from me but he'll take it from my friends so mm -hmm. what was our tribe able to bring out in your son that you hadn't seen before energy power okay. empowerment mm. uh, 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 just that he never does this with me he never does it but that's the only you know you can heal anything with this Except for father son's relationship. <laughs> Trauma. And yesterday, you guys brought it to him. Because wow. you guys are, you know, he, he, he's also a big guy, like uh, in his way, uh, handsome and things, uh, no inhibitions, making big business and uh, uh, shutting out everybody with a lot of success. I had 12 managers before him. Wow. And I had only $30,000 uh, or euros of uh, tax uh, debt. That's what I had mm. of those 12 managers. Wow. Then he came in yeah. and he, he took it all on. Now we got uh, so, uh, so much and it's all coming. Wow. Now, I don't care, but what I see in him, what, how he is for the first time yesterday changed, that uh, he's a different man now. Mm. Wow. And I think he's going to, he wants to take me on. You know, it's good, it's good. If the son wants to take on dad, and, uh, you know, and I got more power, then I did a good job. So two, two, three minutes, it's going to be 20 minutes. I don't know what he's going to do. I thank you guys, because you guys got the quality and the energy, the power, and good looking. So yeah, you got him convinced where I could not. You also, Thank just, you. you also just looked really happy in the ice. You were just smiling. You were like this energy radiating from your, you know, yeah, your no, chest I, and your face. I normally look at everything from outside, you know, and I, I like that position. I like to have the, the, the overview. Um, but yeah, I'm not used to this stuff, you know. I like to have the overview. I like to see things out, outside. Uh, we had a couple of conversations here. I say, yeah, why are you not doing the breathing exercise? Yeah, fucking man, I need my traumas because I need to You need to your perform. traumas? I need to, yeah. Why you do know? you need your traumas? Well, um, l like I said, um, uh, these things make you like, I don't think fear is a bad thing. It makes you like um, uh, uh, cautious about things. And my dad always talks about love and he's, we're creating something beautiful to break that down. It's like, uh, can go really quickly uh, to break, to build something up. It takes years. Mm -hmm. So I always want to be not in the middle of, uh, I need to be outside of that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be walking around like a hippie hugging everyone. And that's what, what this do. does, man. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like, and it's beautiful, but I need to be like, uh, I have a, a role within all what we do. And I need to maintain that role. That, at least that's the way I feel it. And that's why I built these walls. But yesterday I could break that wall down for, for a moment. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was smiling and being happy there, <laughs> Super man. happy, yeah. It was, yeah, I, I, I felt like at ease. Wow. And that's, that's priceless. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Nick. Yeah, I'm Nick. Um, I'm here for you guys. 
Lewis texted me and, and said, we're going to have this retreat in Poland. I'm like, I've been to Poland. And uh, he said, well, you know, Wim Hof's going to be there. I'm like, oh, cool. And he kind of gave the, the rundown. I'm like, dude, Lewis, you could throw this thing at the LA County dump and I'd be there. Like, I, I'm so grateful for this beautiful setting. And I've had a chance to explore the, the you know, just the beautiful mountainside around us. But I'm here for you guys. And I mean it. If, if, this, was, uh, if this was anywhere else, I would have been on the next flight because um, I think I expressed that, you know, I, I struggle with some self-doubt frequently and I'm, I'm on Instagram. I'm stalking you guys and I'm like, God, these guys, not an ounce of self-doubt. Mm. These are, these are, you know, buildings. They're snake bites. These, <laughs> these, these are bigger than snake life bites. human beings. <laughs> Serial and, killer. And I need to be there <laughs> to understand why these people are so perfect. Like talk about be the person that you want to be, you know, like ima ima imagine yourself in that scenario imagine yourself in those shoes and I'm like, I want to be like these guys. I need to go and see what makes them tick. And, you know, we're downstairs and there's 15 of us and energy's going back and forth. And it's easier for me to sit down with Jesse 101 or Mike 101 and, and pick up something from you. And then it's almost like it's overwhelming and I have to go process it. So like just talking with Mike and when he said, you know, um, I walked across the United States because I wanted to be the version of myself that I wanted to be. I just like... It was so overwhelming. I had to just throw my hiking boots on and go walk for an hour. Cause like that's maybe it's the the loneliness of the long distance runner, but that's kind of how I center myself. It's just going out and being in my own head for a little while. And I seriously for for yesterday for ninety minutes just thought, what does that mean? And, and what does that mean for me moving forward? How do I apply it to my own life? So I feel like I've had a chance to at least sit down with every one of you for whether it's five or ten or half an hour, and I've just taken a nugget, you know, one nugget from each of you that is just almost overwhelming and I have to just throw my hiking boots on and go process it. But I'm so grateful that if every one of you came out here, um, because it's, it's really impacting me and, and helping me in a major, major way. So that's the gratitude. And if I, if there's one thing that, um, that I've really learned in two days here, uh, the commonality between the breathing exercises and the ice baths is that we've got monkey brains. Like at the end of the day, we're just we're animals. And as soon as I go into holding my breath or as the second I went into the ice bath, I'm like, fuck this. This sucks. I, I want oxygen or I want to get the fuck out of this cold bath. That's my monkey brain. And then as soon as I push through that first uh, 15 seconds in, in the breath holding or as soon as I push past the first two minutes in the ice bath, I settle into this really neat, happy, comfortable place. It gets, it gets bad again, like, you know, at three minutes or at, at seven minutes in the bathtub, it gets bad again. But it's maybe a lesson to not always avoid painfulness, not always avoid discomfort, that there's a real happy place that can be found if you embrace it initially. Um, so I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to apply that lesson in, in more areas of my life. Mm, love that. Love that. I love that. Uh... I love that Nick was looking at all of us thinking that we're hot shit when he's a two-time Olympian, U.S. national champion. So. I was like, why the fuck is Lewis inviting me to this? <laughs> like, did you run out of people to call or something? So No. You're, I love your energy, man. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. You're an inspiration to me. So. Appreciate that. Um, and before you go, what was the exact line that you said about why you crossed uh, America? We'll pass the mic back yeah. to Mike. I think it was a great because I think it was a great line, and we all really resonated with that. Uh, the reason you walked across the yeah, it's a, it's a, you know, I had to actually do my walk to get to this answer. When people asked me before I did, I didn't really know what to say. I just knew I needed to do it. But um, I had a lot of time to think out there. But uh, yeah, when people ask me, you know, why why did I walk across America? I would say. I walked across America to become somebody I'm actually proud of. You know, the person that I want to be, he did that walk. So let me go try to become him. And it's really the same idea as what Jesse was saying earlier. It's just different words. You know, it's like if somebody asks me who, who my hero is or who inspires me, I love all you guys, but I don't want to fucking say... You know, all you guys, so I love. I don't want to have to say Jesse. I don't want to have to say Win. I don't want to have to say Aubrey. I want. I want to be able to say fucking me. I inspire me. So I try to organize my life to where that 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 dream, that superhero version of me, becomes real me. Yeah. It's a never ending mission. That's great. Love yeah. that. It's kind of like Snoop Dogg. I'm I got tired. I got tired of l watching podcasts and docs of inspiring people mm. and not being one of them. 
They're like, fuck that, man. Yeah, that's you know? great. Yeah, I'm trying trying to. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Thank you, bro. I love that Snoop, Snoop Dogg speech where he was like, I want to thank me yeah. for all the hard <laughs> the hard work I put in, <laughs> for all the late nights right. I put in, for the effort. I want to thank me. Uh, hey, guys. I want to uh, definitely thank everyone in this room for like bringing me in and tell you how grateful I am to be here. I It almost feels like an understatement when I say that because uh, – I honestly feel like the most fortunate person in this room right now. Um, the uh, the talent and inspiration here is like, it's moving. Um, and thank you, you know, for probably letting me slip through the cracks on this email <laughs> and get in here. Because I don't know how else I would have made it in here. Um, so, like, being in a room full of guys who, like, uh, you know, just want to see you get better is like um, worth all the money in the world. So I appreciate all of that. Um, I definitely came here like looking for um, performance and and along those lines, I'm really interested in it and really interested in all the things Wim's done. Um, and uh, I think what I got out of it was just how much like baggage I've, put up over the years and levels of like stubbornness that I've just layered on and so after today's session I feel like I uh, was able to peer into somewhere where I haven't been in a long time so yeah thank you one my name is Taylor uh, Lewis brought me along to help document this experience and uh, help tell the story for you guys um, it's been incredible to watch all of you high performers, thought leaders, just incredible human beings um, go through this experience and, and rally for each other. Seeing you all chant in the ice bath yesterday and Mike singing some crazy notes and everybody smiling and having a good time and pushing through that pain together um, and, and developing that brotherhood in, in such a natural and, and powerful way. It's been incredible to watch and I feel so grateful that that I'm here to help tell that story and share. Um, I think my biggest takeaway is that this stuff is powerful and we're so, we're so privileged and, and we've been given the responsibility to, to share this and um, it needs to be out in the world. And so I'm excited to see moving forward, watching all of you guys support this mission, support this work, and I'm uh, really grateful that we have this experience together to, to share it with the world. Yes. So quick story, me and Lewis in, uh, in April got a workout in together and I asked him, I said, you know, who's been inspirational in your life? Um, you know, what are you doing this year? That's pretty crazy. And he says, well, someone that I really look up to is, is Wim Hof and I'm actually going to go uh, to Poland with him in uh, next January. So now and uh, do some Wim Hof experience with him. And I let no air in between that sentence. And I said, I'm in. Yeah. I didn't, even, I didn't even bite you yet. <laughs> well, that, that was it. I was it. I flat out said, I'm in. I said, I'm in. Because just like, just like you two said, like, there's not going to be a day or a week or a month that goes by that I'm not going to see the Mitch Matthews that I know I'm on earth to become. No chance. Like, it's just not going to happen. And so hearing guys who are you know, old, a little bit older than me say that, it's like, I'm already, I'm already there. I, I'm in. Like, you know, you guys go on a, a run yesterday, and, and I, I was in the bathroom for someone when came up with this, this idea, and I sprinted upstairs. I'm in. Because I'm not going to let someone twice my age go get a run in. I'm not freaking in, you know? And so um, I'm here to maximize my potential um, and give everything I have to everyone. But I'm grateful for everyone's vulnerability. Like, there's freaking billionaire families here. There's guys that have started crazy businesses. There's humongous influences in this room, but... To be able to hold each other in bear hug position and pass out with each other is pretty spectacular, you know? To have that vulnerability is pretty spectacular. And I'm grateful to see that. And in my life, I, I look for challenges. Um, I've created my own challenges with, you know, working out twice a day, healthy eating for 10 straight weeks and things like that. And um, challenges like this, I, I'm looking for those opportunities, but I'm, I'm grateful, Wim, for, for you in, in, in challenging us uh, to create something like an excursion or some record-breaking thing that we're going to do, um, I'm in. 
That's what I say to that. I'm in. I want to help you uh, get this out because it's changed me. It's, it's, it's aligned me. Uh, usually when I go on vacations for three or four days, I get like almost anxiety. Like I have to get back to work. But I'm going to go back to work and back to my business and have anxiety that I'm not here with you guys being vulnerable and changing myself. So it's just realigned me to what's really important. So thank you, everybody, for, for being here and, and for um, letting me be all in with you. Uh, I'm Matthew Hussey. Um, in terms of what I'm grateful for, uh, I, I truly am just grateful to be considered an energy that's worth having on, the, on this week. I, this is rarefied air. Um, and to be around you guys, it, the greatest compliment I can receive is that you thought I would in some way contribute to this. Because I know you wouldn't have invited me if you didn't feel that. Right. It's just um, the accent. <laughs> right. Yeah. He said, we need someone who sounds intelligent. Um, so I, I truly am just grateful to be in, in the company of you guys. In terms of um, uh, why I came, I had a, a really difficult year last year. Uh, it was really tough. I didn't know what I would get out of this, but I did know for sure it would shake things up. Even if I had a terrible time, I'm like, they can't not shake things up. Uh, and I had a pretty terrible time in several ways last year. So I thought, well, it's not going to, you know, another terrible time. Can't hurt me that bad. Um, and one of the, before you go to the next thing, one of the reasons, you know, I chose each person here for a specific reason, right? You all have an energy or some reason why I thought you would contribute to the group, the collective group. And... The reason, one, we're close friends, we've been friends for years, and we hang out in LA a lot, but two is because I was with you through the pain of last year, right. many different occasions, and I just knew that if I could get you here, maybe it's not gonna solve all your problems, but it's gonna give you a lot of tools to support yes. you in overcoming the pain better. That's right. You know, That's Even right. if it's for a week or two of relief, I knew it would give you something to clear the energy, clear the mind, and move into a better year and a better decade without yeah. the baggage of the past. And so that's that's why Matt was in and then he was out. And then he, I was like, dude, I want you here because I know this will help you. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason that I was in and then I was out was because, I mean, I literally, Lewis texted me and said, hey, I've got this thing. I was in a, I was in like a happy holiday mindset at the time. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And then I actually watched some stuff. I said in the lake. It's yeah. not an exaggeration to say I did not sleep that night. I just thought, what on earth have I done? Why and now I, I got to embarrass this? myself by going back to Lewis and backing out. And now how am I going to remove myself from this thing? Um, but you know what? The, one of the big reasons I came, and maybe the biggest reason I came, was when you said this to me, and I had such a visceral <laughs> really like deep, deep fear. I didn't just think this would be uncomfortable. I th it terrified me. Mm. And that was enough to keep me up at night. And I thought, how often in my life do I actually, genuinely, I'm always <clears throat> telling people, my audience, I'm always doing programs, getting people to go and do things that scare the shit out of them. How often in my life do I actually do something that scares the fucking shit out of me? Really? Like... Uh, you know, I, and I mean in my whole life, because the easy answer is, you know, I used to do things that scared me, and then I built this successful business and this audience, and, you know, I did all these uncomfortable things to get there, and now that I'm here, I've not taken a risk in a while. That's the easy answer. But the truth is, even the things I did to build my business weren't terrifying to me because I was good at them. Right. Like, starting business going out and, and persuading people, going and giving speeches, going, those were things I knew I could be good at. Even when I wasn't good at them, I had some belief that if I do this, I kind of think I have an ability here. So even those weren't truly scary. This was something I have, I hate the cold. <laughs> and I grew up, like we would go on skiing trips where mine, out of my family, my fingers, you know, you nicknamed me Extremities this week. <laughs> my, my fingers were the first thing to send us back home really? to, because they were just numb and white. Uh, and so I thought, this is, this is not something I can go and be a, like, I'm going to be one of the best in the group. 
And I rarely ever, ever, ever put myself in situations that are genuinely terrifying. It's always a fake terrifying. Mm. Oh, this is uncomfortable. Safe, but safe. really, I'm still good at that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a big reason I came, uh, was to genuinely scare myself so that I have credibility when I do a retreat this year in going to my audience. And I know they're genuinely terrified of coming to my retreat because they're going to deal with real vulnerable stuff that I have credibility standing there and, and telling them to confront that. Mm. Um, in terms of what I took from it, it's a self-help cliche that peer group is important. And I think in a way, cliches are dangerous because you forget how true they can be. Um, and to be around you guys, I realize how little of peer group I've genuinely fostered in the last decade of, of my life. I've been working, seeing maybe the same two friends, spending time with family, maybe a girlfriend, and, and that's it. And I tell myself that's enough. And it's a very ignorant perspective because I'm here and I see just amazing people and insights and people who have done things and people who just put me to shame in all different ways in my life. And I'm like, how ignorant have I been in the last 10 years that I haven't done more of of this and create and spent more time on peer group. So it's a cliche. I even talk about it being important when I do programs. How much of it have I really done in 10 years? So that's, that's been huge. The importance of physiology and how, you know, we, we always think we're going to think our way into a better emotion. Um, you know, let me logically process why this isn't a big deal, why I should, but actually just to change your physiological state with something radical like this and the effect that that can have reminds me sometimes we just overthink everything and we give feelings way too much importance instead of just shocking our system whether it's working out ice bath breathing that's going to change our state automatically without us having to think our way into it uh and lastly i <laughs> there's a speaking of hypocrisy in my own work and things i need to do a better job of living up to there's a story that i tell on my retreat every time that this program, this experience has made unbelievably viscerally real to me. Um, there's, a, there's a moment in the movie Lawrence of Arabia where Lawrence is lighting matches and letting the flame burn all the way down to his fingertips. And when it gets to his fingertips, it goes out. And one of the other officers looks at him and he can't, He's like, how does he do it? How does he do it? How's he doing that? So when Lawrence isn't looking, he grabs the matches and he lights one up. And he lets it burn all the way down to his fingertips. When it gets to his fingertips, he goes, and it burns him. And now he's angry. So he looks at Lawrence, angry now, and he says, go on then. What's the trick? And Lawrence says to him, the trick is not minding that it hurts. And that to me, this week could not have been more of a representation of, is that uh, we spend so much of our lives trying to avoid pain, uh, but the trick is not avoiding hurt, it's not minding mm -hmm. that it hurts. Mm -hmm. So thank you for making that not just a story to me, mm -hmm. but something very, very real. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely grateful to be part of this. Uh, I must say I'm still a little bit starstruck uh, being surrounded by these people. This here, speaking... But you are a star of yourself. What is your name? Peter. Uh, hey, yeah. Peter the yeah, star. Yeah. <laughs> the camera guy. Uh, this actually, this talking to uh, like uh, a lot of people is my ice bath. Like, I don't re really feel comfortable uh, doing that stuff. That's why I chose for a, a life behind the lens. <laughs> but we all got to learn and uh, do things that are scary. And this is one of the things. And mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm grateful for spending these days with you and that we're going to climb a mountain tomorrow. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be awesome. And, uh, big nice. lesson. Big yeah. lesson so far for you? Uh, from the last few days. From either what you've witnessed watching behind the camera, but also you've experienced and participated as well. So both sides for you, maybe. Well, it's not something from the last few days, but just uh, opening up, being vulnerable has been uh, a thing for the last, from the last few years. Like I've definitely learned that from 
working for the company with Wim and yeah, it's, uh, vulnerability is key. Mm. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Awesome. I actually just met Lewis like a week before this trip, um, so this is definitely like new for me. But I'm super thankful that I got to meet all you guys. Um, and I think for me, like in high school, I heard this quote that was like, uh, leave the world a better place than you entered it. And for some reason, I've like always remembered that. And that's kind of been my goal in life. So um, I think being 21 years old, like I don't really like a lot of kids my age. I think a lot of them are lazy and uh, entitled. So like if I can be that example that proves that wrong and um, shows them, you know, like just how powerful being vulnerable is and how know where hard work can get you um i would love to leave the world a better place than i entered it and i would love to be an example for my generation um and spreading you know just more love and and peace and um i don't know that's kind of just my mission and i do that through telling stories through video um i like to capture stories and document experiences like this um and i get to learn a lot by being behind the camera and editing and watching these clips through a hundred times mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I think my biggest takeaway as of now is to uh, be more vulnerable, the power of community, and uh, to rest a little more. I overwork myself a lot, so this has given me a lot of anxiety the first few days, like, not working at all. But uh, when I get back, I can't wait to, like, make this a monthly thing where I go with friends and, uh, you know, rest and, and talk and be open. So, yeah, thank you guys, and I feel very grateful to be in the presence of all of you. So Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I found uh, brothers. Uh, they are not looking up to me. Are you still looking up a little there to me? Eh? No, no shit. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a simple guy. I'm humble. I want to change the world. And now I'm going to change the world together with all of you. Um, it, it's like almost boring because I, I, I do it as a mantra. I'm a man on a mission every day. And when I have the, uh, the, the ability to reunite with bigger forces, bigger powers, then uh, I'm the first one to take it on and tell the story again. If I go into an Uber, I, I'm, I'm into the stories, I'm into the mission. And when he, uh, uh, when he drops us off, it, it's always embracing, always hugging, because we uh, end up in love mm -hmm. and uh, uh, changing the world. And until it's not done, uh, things like this, uh, this need to happen. And uh, being vulnerable, I'm fucking vulnerable. I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting older, and I, I'm still doing this shit. Yeah, man, I'm still doing this shit. <laughs> uh, but now, oh, hey, seeing you here empowers me. Mm. I thank you, uh, for not only from the heart, but uh, yeah, let, let's make a lot more happening from here, and it's happening already. So uh, actually, uh, sometimes I do not need the need of words to tell uh, that I love this. I love this. And the world uh, needs change, and we are able to give it. So uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for kicking my ass, too. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you do, too. I'm always on top of it all. And now I'm, oh, shit, man. Oh, yeah, well, hey. The building is there. It is. I see everybody, man. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, brothers. I think uh, one of the, uh, I think a lot of people will look at Wim Hof and they'll look at the cold. And that's an important part. It's an important part to be able to push yourself past your fears and recognize it's something that's good for you. You may be afraid of, but if you push past that thing, it's going to be good for you and beneficial. And a lot of focus gets put on that. but. I think what's really we're seeing here in the breath work is something else that's really special and powerful, and that's the release of emotions that have been stored mm. and things that have come up. You know, like I do breath work a lot. The second round here today, I was so happy that I started crying because I recognized how often in my life I'm not that happy. Mm. You know, right? And like that came up from the breath. And, and why, was, why was Mike crying? He doesn't really know, but there was something there to be released. Why did Jesse see his face interposed with his child's face, his younger face? And why are these things happening? There's things that are beyond you know, just the cold and just the simplicity of pushing yourself past your limits.
there's a deep spiritual foundation here. There's some yeah. kind of magic that's happening within the within the consciousness itself, and he's giving access to that through all the means. And these means are free, you know, free cold, free breath, yeah. and like free medicine. And uh, I think that's just beautiful. And I, I just hope that as everybody shares this message, you share not only the courage to do the things that are hard, because that's kind of easy for a lot of men to do the things that are hard. We've all done things that are hard, but also do the things internally that release and open up those, those spots. Like, you know, hearing Mitch cry yesterday and, and express that he wasn't proud of himself. Like, yeah. fuck yeah, man. Like, that's amazing. Like, every single person, when they do that, like Mark, hearing you today, man. Yeah. Like that's that's the shit. Like I know you've run some long distances. Like I'm not that impressed to be honest, <laughs> but I'm fucking super impressed with you from what you just said there. Like I admire you for that. Yeah. Like I absolutely <laughs> admire you for that. And the other stuff's rad too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> like that's yeah. dope. But that's the that's like the special thing. And I think so. It's just not. Not looking at that thing that might be the dazzling accomplishment, but knowing like internally the diamonds. Always talking about the diamonds. Where's the diamonds? The diamonds in the fucking heart. It's in the heart. How much can you show of the diamond in your heart? Like how bright can you let that thing go? And if you have anything obstructing it, any kind of mistruth, any deception, any delusion, any projection, you're going to be clouding that diamond. So let's polish that fucking thing and let it shine for the world so bright that it's a lighthouse for everybody to see it when ships are crashing. They can look up at the sky and they see it and they know. They know that the heart is there and the heart is always going to be there. It's unborn and it's undying. It's untarnishable. It's unbreakable. And we all have it. Nobody's special. We all have it. And that's what we're here to remind people. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. That was a sermon. Is there <laughs> any final thoughts from anyone or anything else that opened up that they didn't get to share? I know, right? <laughs> he only said it because he meant it. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I, I admire that too. That was great. That was great. That was fucking great. There you go. That, what Aubrey finished on actually in terms of no one's special is actually interesting because there there are certain nobody's special, but there are certain people who kind of take up the mantle to come into a room and change the energy of that room, and anyone could do that. Anyone could come in and change the energy of an entire dynamic if they chose to. It's, that's what leadership is, right? What's really interesting, Wim, about you is there is a, no matter how afraid everyone is, you walk into a room and everyone sort of feels safer. You're sort of like, oh, we're all right. We're going to be all right. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and it is like there are certain things we do this week that are terrifying. And I've watched. It's fun. One of the things that I, some various people have said it this week has been the most fun. Jesse, you said it has been to watch all these grown, powerful men terrified out of their minds at different times. And to see that has been cool. Um, but, you know, Wim, you walk into a room and your energy sort of announces you as you walk into a room and you know when you're in that room. And that I think is really powerful. And I think it's something we, we should all take back to, you know, he's in that house. You know he's in the house. <laughs> yeah. And that, you know, whether we go back to, you know, our family, Steve, you know, or our businesses or our audience or our colleagues or our staff, knowing that we are each individually, these very important centers of energy. And to honor that by, you know, we, we think so much about ourselves and what I'm afraid of, what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with. Uh, and it takes the focus off of how am I changing the energy of the room that I walk into? And what am I bringing to that room? And your leadership, Wim, is what makes this experience. The soul. That's it. The soul. The soul is what you are going to bring in every room you're going to get in. And that's going to make all the difference. Yeah. Yes, sir. Nice. Anyone else want to share a final thought? Yeah, I can't relate uh, to that. But I can relate to that with the rest. Right. Uh, okay. The no, no, no. love of the family. The love of the family is the last bit. Out there. I did the Kilimanjaro, as you know, with 26 people with the cancer, Crohn's disease, all kinds of things. 
at, uh, we, we did it, uh, not in three days, we did it in two days. More than successful. We did not hear any physiologists, doctors, who would have had the decency, at least, to ask, how did you do it? How did you do it? Because we are doctors, investigators in life, we want to uh, improve healing and methods and all. No question. No question. So, that, that, but we did it. And I've, uh, I went to uh, uh, Serengeti. Serengeti, after the uh, Kilimanjaro, very successfully done. It was already in the pocket, but I wanted to see the biggest elephant in the world, which is 7.8 tons. Mm. It's like 16,000 uh, 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 16, pounds. Is that mm -hmm. true? Yeah. yeah, something like. No, I mean, huge motherfucker. And he is there, and I'm able to go with the Maasai. The Maasai, they are able to approach the animals, the lions, as a, without fear. They have no religion. Uh, they have respect for Mother Nature, and they know how to approach the lion, because they have no fear. They are divine. And, and I go with them, they are my friends, we go together, and they let me approach the biggest elephant in the world. And, uh, and there it is with this ultrasounds going on there, this presence, it is alive. The, 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 the being is alive. There you get close, you don't know what's happening, you get these waves over you, the ultrasonic, it, it gets into your uh, brain waves, uh, your whole body, you feel it everywhere. And uh, I get close uh, to uh, his legs, even bigger than the building, uh, 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 buildings. <laughs> columns, man, columns. All alive. This belly, it's a, a gut feeling, man, God is over there. And uh, well, slowly but surely, I get to the back. And uh, I lift up his tail. Wow. And I see a big black hole. It's a vortex. I mean, they can swallow you fully. They can swallow you fully <laughs> if you approach it too much. Wow. I was struck by all, was completely flabbergasted. Now my yogic control came in, and I just kept a, I kept a poise and the control within myself. And I went there slowly but surely away from, from that massive big being, uh, the Loxodonta Africana. And uh, I came back in the Moshi, and I had reception on the telephone. And I said, Ain oh, Enam, Enam. We did the Kilimanjaro so successful in two days, not three days. All the transformed. And I saw him, the biggest one, the biggest elephant in the world. I saw him and he had a huge asshole. But you <laughs> motherfucker, you are still the biggest motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> biggest asshole. <laughs> That's the love of the family. <laughs> we appreciate you, Wim. We're so <laughs> thanks, thanks. We're so man. grateful for I'm your more uh, than thanks. Taking the time. Things are going to be done. Exactly. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful you guys are all here. And we gotta jump in the uh, hot tub now, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hot tub, let's Uncle do it. Jesse's hot tub. Uncle Jesse's hot tub.